Hey guys, it's G. Today I'm going to talk to you about inconsistencies using the drip test. So for most people, you'll be using flood float roll as your pouring medium. Uh, that's because this is some of the cheapest stuff you can use as a pouring medium. Um, another very common one, and this is a retail pouring medium, meaning it's by default more expensive, uh, Liquitex. Um, but for the purposes of vid this video, we'll be using flood float roll. Now you may have seen the orange cap, you may have seen a different um, design. Uh, if you have the white and red one, you're dealing with Australian Protoro, um, and that's too expensive and hard to get to be using to, to be using as a pouring medium for your everyday techniques. So we'll be using this one, the American version, uh, and it is Flood 6, the stuff that's made for latex-based paint, the water-based because they also do make a medium for oil based paints. Now, what we're going to do is display the consistencies of some of the most common techniques using this thing called the drip test, where we will put a similar amount of each paint onto a piece of cardboard, prop it up, and then the speed at which you see the paint drizzle down will also reflect how thin the consistency is. So, to demonstrate this, I will be going through the consistency of very thick techniques like uh, the bloom technique and the uh, ring pour technique, which I find very close in consistency. And then we'll deal with some of the medium level consistencies like the straight pour or ribbon pour or dirty pour, all of which are very similar and come out of a cup. Um, uh, chain pulls are also somewhat in this range and then we'll also cover the thin consistency ones uh, like a touch board. Cool. And I could actually probably do this with the same paint and just water it down in stages so you can see. Now in terms of the paints you will be using, I will use Art Creations. Black Art Creations is the younger sister brand of um, Amsterdam paints. It's made by Royal Talons as well. Uh, they are slightly cheaper. Uh, slightly less potent in um, pigment, but still very, very good. The one I'm using today is Ivory Black, uh, and it's, a, I'd say, a medium body paint. So it'll be close to whatever you end up using. Most paints are medium body. Soft body are very runny and not very common, and very heavy body paints usually come in a tub sort of container, not tube. Okay, and here's the actual demonstration. Now I'm gonna display everything on the screen and walk you through what I'm talking about here. We are gonna do an individual drip test for each of these consistencies on each of these small coaster-sized um, wood panels, okay? I've got the propped up at a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna run a timer along with the experiment while it's dripping to show you how much time it takes because I can't flip all three at the same time, okay? I'm gonna use a dripper to be able to use the same amount of paint. Uh, obviously, thicker paint will move slower, but the timer will help us uh, account for the difference. So when I say one-to-one -one, uh, in the ratios, what I mean here is one part float roll to one part paint. In the medium consistency uh, recipes, that's gonna be two parts float roll to one part paint, and the really thin consistency is gonna be three parts float roll to one part paint. Okay, now this may vary slightly depending on your weather. I'm in Egypt in the Middle East and it's starting to get a little bit warmer. Um, as you know, climate plays a very big factor in consistency, but I'm just trying to show you the difference between what is considered thin, what is considered a medium consistency, what is considered thick, okay? Now on the thick side, we've got the colors uh, consistency in a in the bloom technique we've got which is pretty much the same recipe if you're doing a swipe with a cell activator uh, if you're doing a ring, a ring pour where you want nice crisp circular lines or if you want a chain pull where the composition doesn't warp too much because the paint is running in the medium category we've got the actual cell activator in the bloom um, that you all obviously want to have thinner than the colors in the bloom. We've got the standard flip cup, which is usually the first technique beginners try. We've got the ribbon pour, which is really when you layer colors in a cup and work with that in any sort of way. 
uh, straight pour it, uh, make a pattern, do what they call the dirty pour. Regardless, these are all about the same consistency. And the regular swipe that you see people do with, you know, a piece of tissue or a piece of paper using silicone wood. That will be the medium consistency category. In thin uh, consistency, we've got obviously the Dutch pour. Uh, I can't really think of any other technique that um, that that is this thin besides the Dutch pour. Um, now, obviously, this is not comprehensive of all techniques. This is just some of the most common ones that people use and you'll see online. Um, and anything else will fall in between them. Now, friends, let me take a moment to ask you a huge favor. I'm basically 200 hours away from getting monetized on YouTube. And if you could, you know, put a few of my videos on and help me reach that milestone, I would be extremely grateful. And now we're ready for the test. So as we flip the first panel, the thick recipe, put the timer on. We flip number two, the medium recipe, timer goes on. And flip number three, and the timer goes on. So you see the thin recipe caught up with the medium recipe very quickly and hits the edge of the coaster exactly nine seconds. The medium recipe hits the edge of the coaster at 15 seconds and the thick recipe actually never hits the bottom of the coaster, even by the end of this video. So here you go. I hope this helps explain paint consistency. By popular request from our group, the next video will be on color theory and layering, as well as taking into account paint transparency. So thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.